If I continue to do it, have I really repented? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. Um, you, you've talked about repentance before and spoken of it as, uh, in large part, a change of mind. That's the literal Greek. <clears throat> but, but what we learn uh, in church so often is that it is also a significant change in behavior, like a 180. You know, it's when you, when you've repented of something, you're no longer doing that, that thing. You've gone the other way now, you know, you, you know, um, there was, there was before Jesus and now there's after Jesus. And now that you're in Jesus and you're saved and you've repented of those things, you're no longer doing them, right? (laughs) (laughs) You, you, you you, you giggle like a sinner. You have repented. And maybe it, you have to do it again. Maybe this is over and over and over and over as long as we live. You think of Jeremiah, <clears throat> I think it's chapter 31, where it's in the old King James translated, turn thou me and I shall be turned. Jeremiah realized that to be turned, he had to be turned. In other words, he was passive in it. He couldn't do it. <clears throat> And that's a wonderful verse to memorize. Some of the Reformers' prayers, you'll find them in Prayers of the Reformers, edited by Clyde Manschreck. You'll find some where the Reformers prayed, Repent me. Repent me. In other words, again, it was saying, I can't do what I want to do. I need you to turn me because I can't turn. And that's not common in Christian circles to have it preached like that. I wish it were. But for those who write to us and say, I wish I could repent and believe, but I can't. Answer is, of course you can't. But God can repent you. Go to a congregation where the gospel is clearly preached, and I'd add where the sacraments were really administered as if they did anything, And listen, and if that pastor is sharp, he will maybe even use one of those reformers' prayers. Repent me, O Lord, which is saying, I can't repent me. Then to the question, does it mean if I still do sinful things that I didn't repent of them? The answer is no. It's just that you're coming into the knowledge of how deep your sin runs in you and how it is seemingly inextinguishable in this life. Welcome to the Christian race. Um, like our hair color or our eye color. or something. Yep. It's just in there. Yep. And, <clears throat> and it's in there in our inherited sin and we'll only lose it at death. And I know uh, there are stories of pastors for whom this is very frustrating. I keep, you know, we get the image of, of Jesus being the good shepherd who seeks out the lost sheep yep. and goes and gets that sheep. Well, yep. you know, somewhere in my mind when I was younger, Jesus goes and gets the sheep, right? Brings the sheep back to the flock and now everything's hunky-dory. Well, then I had kids and you realize, no, you bring, bring the child back and set them down. And what does the child do? <laughs> and they're running over the hill again. And I'm like, you know, out of our own, you know, personal experiences, you know, just parental ones. How often is Jesus willing to go after me when I'm like running away like a wicked little elf (laughs) over the hill as soon as he sets me down? Yeah. You you stupid sheep. Why don't you stay put? Right. And this is, you know, this is what our earthly experience is. And I know why some pastors have gotten frustrated with that sort of thing. And it's tempting to run to the law. Right, sure. it's tempting to run to the law. Sure. If you drop the hammer of the law, then that that somehow you're going to get better behavior out of the flock. Right, the old, they, they're going to stop running amok. Those sheep are going to stop running here, there, and all over the place, and committing even the same sins. Those same sins they were just convicted of. They just ran off and did it again. Yeah, uh, which is me, by the way. Yeah, um, one of the things that we learn by bitter human experience, and also from Jesus' own words, is that this thing in us runs really deep. We can be baptized or converted as adults. 
and we still deal with them. An honest pastor will lay that out to his congregation. If you misuse a verse like, I came that you might have life and might have it abundantly and don't qualify it. Example, one of the best basic books on Christianity is titled that, John R. W. Stott, Basic Christianity, but I can't recommend it. Why? It's destroyed by one chapter, which lays out the wonderfulness of the Christian life. Hmm. Stott bought that, and I wish he hadn't. I can't recommend the book because of one chapter. The pastor should be saying to his flock, let me tell you what you can expect and what you should not expect. And I, I, when we're sitting here and doing this conversation, I tend to play devil's advocate. You know, it's one of my roles here. Uh, but it's a real one. It is that I, I am a sinner like the rest. I struggle with the same things as the rest, all of you. Um, so when I ask this stuff, I am, I am really asking it. I'm, you know, I'm doing it for other purposes here. But when it comes to, you know, there's a throwaway line. I can't remember. We don't tend to embrace it very much. But it's repented and always repenting yeah. on the Lutheran side. Yeah. Right? And uh, it's, it's you know, one of the pressures I had gotten from a pastor friend is, Ted, you know, you really need to be going to church every week because you're too great a sinner to not go which is tongue in cheek, you and my friends are always poking at me and I'll always talk about that. But it's true, it's true. The sins, these, the, the, this sin machine in my heart doesn't stop because yep. I was forgiven last Sunday. Here, yep. we're recording on Wednesday here, uh, you know, in June 2021 and I can tell you after going to church this last Sunday that I have been a wretch now, you know, any number of times, uncountable times. Like I said, even as I was leaving the church. So it's just this, it's just it, this we fountain. Cannot, <clears throat> we cannot imagine the extent of the grace of Christ in his cross. I we, wish I could get that. I wish I could get that. If that, if I could get that, then maybe somehow this wouldn't wouldn't me like feeling that more and, and understanding that more wouldn't that me wouldn't that help me sin less it in some way it probably could but <clears throat> you're stuck in the same place i am and others are we're yearning for his return or our own death to finally be delivered living with that faith is so hard yep it is so hard yep i am i am continually Invited in my darkness to not to believe my sin is greater than the cross every yep. single day. Yep. And the, the truth of the gospel is not found in your or my improvement. The truth of the gospel is found in his resurrection from the dead. That's where it's found. Even when I do the thing that I just repented of. Yep. Implying that I would stop. And I do it again. Yep. Like a drug addict even, going right back to. Even then. An evil. <clears throat> So the person who says, I want to repent but can't, has got to have a pastor preaching the gospel to him. It's the only way. The law will never do it. And we'll hear my confession. Yeah. So I can actually be absolved. Yeah. Yeah. Again and again and again. Which is Jesus' actual that's, absolution. That's right. This is not. His words are, for, are from Jesus, for Jesus, on your behalf. So I really am forgiven. Yep. I really am absolved. Yep. And the way you know that Christianity is true is the resurrection of Christ from the dead, not your improvement. And it's not based on the quality of my, of my words that leave my mouth or, the true, or the, uh, that I've truly repented in my, in my own mind. You probably have truly repented and you're back into doing it again. Me too. I hate that. We'll someday be delivered from it. Come, Lord Jesus. All right. This is right, right in the zone. Hope you guys like this one. Uh, come to 1517.org for more and find us on social media, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more 
And please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.